The first thing we need to do is load our long fiber tape, seen here, through our button. And for the independent internal brace, we're going to use the double loaded tightrope, as seen here, which has a number two tiger wire passing suture. And there's also a number five through this second hole here. To pass the fiber tape, we're first going to remove the number five suture. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pass the stiff end of the fiber tape through this hole alongside our mechanism. So conveniently, the fiber tape has a stiff waxed end. And so we can pass it through alongside as seen here. So we want to make sure that there's two passes through the button with the fiber tape. And we want to make sure that we have it oriented properly so that the two free ends of the tape are going to be on the tibial side. We take the other stiff end, which is much easier through the vacated hole from the passing suture that we removed. Then we're going to even out the tapes. So now we have our independent internal base passed through the femoral suspensory tightrope fixation button. And the free ends will be on the tibial side here. Now we prepare the graft. We've created our four stranded graft link construct. And before we're going to do the suturing, we want to go through this important step of how to pass the tapes. And when done this way, upon completion, the tapes will be inside the construct and will not be visible at the end of the procedure when the graft is in place in the knee, which is nice. We have four strands of the graft. So if you take a hemostat and come between the outer on one side in the inner construct and pass one end of the tape, as seen here, and the same thing on the other side. Through the outer limb of the tendon, from the central part of the tendon, pass the other side. And then we'll put our linking sutures on each side the tapes will still slide, as we'll show you, and then upon completion of the construct, the tapes will be within the middle of the graft. So we have our two saccage sutures on the femoral tibial side, and you can see the internal brace. As I pull, it slides easily. So even though we have the, the linking sutures, it does not grab the internal brace, so it stays totally independent of the graft, which is critical. So we're going to drill the flip cutter. So there we are. Take the 6-9 guide out. So the first step here is to pound the guide sleeve down. You can see the 10 millimeter flip cutter. And then we'll pass our fiber stick. Just use a simple loop grasper to retrieve that for our passing suture. And then we'll dock this. So our flip cutter comes out directly where we wanted it to in the ACL footprint. So we'll retro cut our tibial socket, the shaver in place. Get that debris out. So now we're going to pass through our tiger stick. Here's our loop grasper. So this will be our shuttle suture on the tibial side. So now we're going to pass our graft. We have to retrieve our docking suture from the femoral socket. Having the passport cannula in place makes this very easy now. So here's our femoral docking suture. That's out the passport cannula with our tibial suture. What I'm showing here is a, a nice trick to allow for easy passage of your button on the femoral side so you don't have to use x-ray intraoperatively. So we know our intraosseous distance we measured when we created our femoral socket was 40. So what we're doing is just marking our strands at 40, but it's from the distal end of the button. Because remember what's going to happen is the button's going to go out the small femoral hole and 
we expect it to flip on itself at 40 millimeters from the end of the button, which would be the aperture of the hole on the femoral side. So when we see those blue marks pass into the femoral socket, we know the button will be outside on the femur and it'll flip easily and it's right on the bone. And it's a nice way to do it without having to use x-ray intraoperatively. So first thing we do is we pull those four sutures out the femoral side. And then I'll put the scope back into the joint and we'll watch the button pass. And here's the button. You can see the fiber tapes pass through the button as we did initially. And we're going to look for that little blue mark where we measure the intraosseous distance where we expect the, the button to flip on its own. So it's a little bit under the tapes there. There it is. So you can see our blue mark coming through the passport candle with the graft. There's the blue marks. So right, right there, that point, the button just flipped right at the aperture there at our 40. So when we pull back, you can see we're, we've, got, we've got our fixation now. Now a key point right here is I like to pull the slack out of the tapes. So now we're going to hoist the graft up into the femoral socket with the tight rope RT shortening strands on the femoral side. It's important to keep some degree of tension on the tapes just so there's no slack of the independent internal brace. So we've marked the graft. Graft was 63 long, so we're going to pull it up 20 into the femoral socket with our intraarticular measurement of 23. So there's our graft going up into the femur. We'll go to the blue line right there, perfect. And then we'll pass the tibial end of the graft with the no button loop into the tibia when we took the slack out of the tapes. So the next step is going into the tibia. Another important point here is you never pass the loop alone. We always put a shuttle suture to protect the loop. So we're going to pass the two ends of the tape and the shuttle suture for the tight rope no button loop into the tibia. So now we deliver the two tapes and then we'll deliver the tight rope no button loop out the tibia and then the graft will pass. There's our graft going into our tibial socket. We'll pull that down and you can see we're right pretty much on our numbers 23 inch articular distance. There's our graft in good position and so now we can address the tibial side. First thing we we'll do is we're going to take out our little passing loop for the no button tight rope. So that number two we just pull that off now. So now we're going to apply our button, the ABS button, to the no button loop. So attachable button system. This is a 14 millimeter diameter button. It's perfect for the independent internal brace because there are two accessory holes in the button to allow separate passage of the tapes through the button. So we're going to come in first and apply the shortening strands on each end of our ABS button. So now what I like to do is I like to shorten the shortening strands here a bit on the tibia. So I'm just going to take some of the slack out of the system. I'm not tightening it all the way. I bring it down to about here. So now we're going to pass the independent internal brace tapes. So what I'm going to do is pass one tape for the independent internal brace through the one buttonhole. And then the other tape through the other hole. So now I have the tapes passed. A huge point here is everything we're going to do with fixation of the independent internal brace and the graft is at full extension or hyperextension if they have it. What I'm going to first do is just I'm going to bring the shortening strands down. I'm not tightening the tibial fixation. I just want to bring the button down to the tibia and, and that little nub fits in that hole. I just pushed it in like that. So I've not put any tension on the shortening strands at all. The reason is because it's going to be independent fixation. I'm going to first fix the tape ends for the internal brace and then will fix the tibia finally with the shortening strands. An important point right now is to make sure all the slack is taken out. On the tibial side for my fixation of the two tape ends we use a 4.75 millimeter biocomposite swivel lock. And so we have a step drill to make a 4-5 hole and generally I'm about a centimeter or so distal to the button. You can see our button right there. So come in with the drill just about a centimeter or so here on the tibia and I drill the step drill down like so. You always have to tap the tibia. This bone's hard. So even this cadaver it's not bad. So we tap that and then we're going to get our fixation for the independent internal brace. We're absolute full extension. I've already taken the slack out of the tapes. One thing that's helpful here is you don't want the tapes to be too tight. You can add a little hemostat here if you want to to put a millimeter of slack before you fix the tapes. But actually, because they kind of 
come over the button, there's almost a millimeter of slack built in that way. So now again, we're in full hyperextension of the knee. I find my hole right there. Remember, this is the independent internal brace. So we take this right to the cortex. Undo our sutures and we can just check, make sure we're deep enough. Back this up clockwise. Looks like I'm perfect right at the cortex. So at this point, I do not need this suture that was in the swivel lock. The tapes are fixed. I can cut the tapes. Internal brace is done. Now we need to fix the graft because I haven't fully tightened the tibia. I like to use the tensioning handles because you can get additional strength. So, plus it really is a lot easier on your fingers. And now what I like to do is cycle the knee. And I'm pretty vigorous at this step where I really want to take this knee through a range of motion 25, 30 times, put on the graft, put a little drawer lockman on the graft, any creep, I'm gonna get out of the system. So I think this is really important because what I'm gonna do, and this is the advantage of the all inside technique with suspensory fixation on the femur and tibia, I can retention. So I can take out any slack in the system that might happen here just from ranging the knee. So I really put some force on it here, lockman, pivot, I do it intraoperatively. So now once I've done that, we go back into our fully extended position. We're going to take out our passing suture for the femoral button because we know we're in good position on the femur. We're going to apply the tensioning handles now to the femur. And just as we did on the tibia, again, keeping the knee fully extended or hyperextended, we're going to retension. So if there was any creep in the system just from doing that vigorous range of motion, we can take it up at this point. Once we do that, I come back to the tibia and I do one last time on the tibia. So this is my sequence. First fix the two tape ends for the internal brace, full extension with the swivel lock. Then I do my preliminary tibial fixation with the handles, cycle the knee vigorously, and then do the femur again in full extension or hyperextension and the tibia one more time. And then since the sutures are right here, I go ahead and tie these to my button because this does give me some backup fixation. And remember I showed you my button's right on the bone. And so I just go ahead and tie my no button sutures here down to the button here, just give me a, a little additional fixation. I've never had to take a button out. These are low profile. So that's the completed all inside technique with the independent internal brace. And we'll take a look at our graft. So here's our final construct. And you can see the quadrupled semitendinosus. Notice you don't see the tapes for the internal brace. The way I showed you the graft preparation, the tapes are inside. Got great tension on this graft. AM bundle, attachment femur, tibia, isometric, tapes in place, very secure, good position of the graft. Remember, I won't use the semitendinosus, so I preserve the gracilis. Another advantage of this technique all inside, you just need the semi-T only to quadruple. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to dig into the graft a bit to find the tapes because I want to show you that there is going to be laxity of the tapes in flexion. The normal ACL goes through a loosening pattern from zero to 90 of three millimeters. So the tape was fixed in full extension where it would be the tightest, but it's gonna be lax in flexion. So I'm gonna bring my probe in. I'm gonna open up this graft a little bit, see if we can find the tape. There's one of the tapes. And you can see right here, look at the laxity of the tape. We're at 90 degrees of flexion. You can see the tape, it's not too tight. The tape's an internal brace. We want the graft to see load. The tape is only going to kick in at a high load where there could be a stress to re-tear the graft. That's where we want the tape to protect the graft. But we want the graft to remodel and revascularize and it will do that at the lower loads. So I think it's a really important point here. You can see 90 degrees of flexion, the tape has laxity. But again, it's right within the graft, so it really looks nice at the end.